In the last episode, we talked about the GIF, JIF, and JIF pronunciation wars. Let's see what you had to say. Not technically a comment, but getting a shout out from Ben Zimmer always makes my day. If you don't know Ben's work, he's a great um, uh, linguistics guy. He posts sometimes on language log uh, and it just is just an all around force, I think for uh, good on the internet as far as language is concerned. And he provided some insight into um, how we might explain Jaif in the future that it's G, uh, more simply put is the G from words like beige or collage or mirage. Which, yeah, I'm gonna do that from now on. Slipper, so I'm picking up what you're putting down. Uh, this is a fair point. The, uh, the examples that we showed uh, were only differing pronunciations of vowels and not consonants. So uh, to provide further d debunking, I don't know. <laughs> there were, a lot of people called this a debunking and I don't know that I would go that far, but uh, to provide further Ammunition, that also sounds weird. Um, so I would I would point towards uh, words like, I have a list, um, CUNY, uh, which is the City University of New York cap for the Civilian Air Patrol, SHIELD, which, you know, if you're a Marvel fan, you're familiar with, uh, FAT, P-H-A-T, um, and CHIPS, which I forget the exact what it's for, but it's the it's the police force, um, as, uh, as examples of words where uh, the first consonant is not said the same way that it is in the word that comprises the acronym. The point being that when an acronym is pronounced like a word, it is, I think, rare for people to look at it and think about how it should be said based upon the words that make it up. We say acronyms as though they are new words and try to apply language rules to those new words. We don't um, sort of learn from the pronunciation of the, the words that make up the acronym. Oh, and one other thing, if your response to the fact that SHIELD or CHIPS doesn't work as a, an acronym because it's made up, I have some news for you about literally everything else. Matt MC1 and Andrea point out that there are in fact things that we probably do call jifs, which are not technically jifs, uh, like the way that many images are displayed on Twitter or on Imager, which is a pronunciation thing we're gonna get to in a minute. Um, and I think this is really interesting because there is no hesitance on my part to describe those things as animated jifs, but you know, technologically they are not. So the thing that I guess I predicted in the video was not a prediction, but a statement of a, the way things are, the current state of affairs. Amoscare 1988 talks about how a lot of the fight surrounding the jif pronunciation debate might have to do with the fact that it's kind of a um, written first word, which I think is a very interesting idea that it's something that we interact with more written and therefore sort of inside of our own minds, then we say it to other people. And uh, when we do finally have to say it out loud, we have to confront this sort of di the differing internal states of others, uh, um, as it were. And uh, I think that this is interesting. We were talking about, uh, while writing this episode, other places that this might be the case. And uh, <coughs> Scabs mentions um, one, of the, one of the things that came up in conversation during research, which is the, the pronunciation of a, a fictional names and fictional places, uh, you know, fantasy and sci-fi, I think being the um, largest perpetrators of, you know, just co like complicated words that you just, you have to deal with figuring out how to say or not say. And then when you talk to your friends about it, when you say something different from what they say, you gotta just figure out how to get on the same page. And I think that, you know, this is a, this is a great, um, a great parallel. To Spoon of Doom and everyone else who I wronged during the portion of the episode where I tried to pronounce G-I-F in other languages, um, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I will do penance. Uh, so I will try now to pronounce, as you have said, Spoon of Doom, uh, G-I-F with a rolling G. How many people pronounce it in Dutch because it's already existing, an existing word meaning poison. Ready? <clears throat> Hiff. Did I do? How did I do? I'll do it when I do it again. Hiff. Is that a ro I think that's a rolling G. I'm sorry if it's not. Georg, or you could just do this.
Tim Wee. So we get to the imager pronunciation debate, which I said that we would get to earlier. Uh, so I went to uh, Camp Imager, so I say it Imager, um, last year, and it was super fun. It was a really great time. But I learned that even among, uh, you know, users and less so the people who made it, but sort of, uh, there is not agreement between how it is said. I've heard it said um, Imger, Imger, Imager, and Imager. And I, so, you know, I think that actually it is a little bit of a model for the gif, jif, jif uh, debate in that people will say it differently to each other and because they know that they use the website and they like it and they're on the same page, there's no, or at least I didn't experience much turmoil. So, you know, we can hope to be like Imagerians or Imagurians or Imgerians or Imgurians. Uh, Farid, which is what Google Translate told us your name is. Uh, we can't read Cyrillic, so if that's a thousand miles off, I'm very sorry. For my second round of penance, I'm gonna try to pronounce how you have described it, G-I-F-K-A. Gifika. That seems like that's totally wrong. Hold on, let me think about this for a second. G Gifka? Gifka? That sounds slightly more Russian, but God. <sighs> I'm sorry. Gif, Gifika. That seems wrong. That seems like, so he says don't smash the syllables together, but that's like an extra syllable. So it's like, Gifka. Is that all right? Is that close? Rain Valor compares the uh, argument around Jaif pronunciation to the Oxford comma, which I think is a really interesting comparison because I feel like the argument around the Oxford comma became more heated once more people started talking about the argument for the Oxford comma and started making uh, like funny web comics about why the Oxford comma is important. And so this makes me think that, you know, one of the explanations for the presence of the debate is the fact that it's like it's like self-sustaining. The more you debate about it, the more you know what the other side would say, the more you know what the reasonings are, like we talked about, you know, what, what the different kinds of authorities are. And so it becomes a kind of um, self-sustaining conversation. So basically what I'm saying is that um, if we can figure out how to power the world on YouTube comments, we have a free energy source. Left for Cake points out uh, Jay Witt's great video on the pronunciation of both um, Pokemon and different Pokemon, -z, different Pokemans. Uh, it's a very good video if you haven't seen it. Riley Gilmartin makes uh, several cases for why a certain pronunciation would be better and gets into an area that we didn't talk about at all in the episode, which is the one that um, sort of feels nicest or sounds nicest. Um, and I would be really curious to know how people feel about this, whether or not they think their preferred pronunciation literally sounds better or is for whatever reason easier to say. And of course this is mostly directed towards, I think English speakers, but I would love to hear from um, other um, language speakers as well. I of course am inclined to agree. I think Jaif sounds great. 